during uh, this ASCO this year, so 2023, I presented data from the Thor study. Um, as you may know, FGFR alterations, so mutations or fusions, are found in 15, 20% of metastatic ureal carcinoma, and they may function as an oncogenic driver. And four years ago, in a phase two trial, we assessed an pan FGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitors called erdafitinib, and we have shown that this drug is quite active because the objective response rate was 40%. The median PFS was 5.5 months. And based on this data, Erdafitnim was granted accelerated approval in the United States and was approved in 17 other countries. But now we need to demonstrate that the drug is more active than the standard of care. So, for example, the chemotherapy. So, THOR is a confirmatory randomized phase three study. The patients were Required to have metastasis or locally advanced and resectable urothelial carcinoma, we select, so pre specify FGFR2 or 3 mutation and fusions and disease progressions. The patients were required to have previously received one or two lines of systemic radio um, therapy that included an immune checkpoint inhibitors. So the patients were randomized one to one to receive either erdafitinib, 8 milligram with pharmacodynamically up to tration to 9 mg, or chemotherapy of choice, could be docetaxel, could be venflunin, once every three weeks. We plan to enroll 280 uh, patients in this study, and we had an interim analysis in January this year, and during this ASCO, I reported the, uh, the result from this interim analysis. In the primary analysis, Overall survival for erdafitinib was superior to investigator choice of chemotherapy. The median follow-up was 15.9 months, and the median overall survival was 20.1 months for erdafitinib versus only 7.8 months for chemotherapy. So meaning that erdafitinib reduced the risk of death by 36% versus chemotherapy. So as another ratio was 0.64 and met the pre-specified cutoff for this interim analysis, the p-value was 0 0.005. So based on this interim analysis result, the IDMC recommend to stop the study, unblind data, and crossover patient from chemotherapy to erdafitinib. And also, uh, erdafitinib significantly improved progression-free survival. The median PFS was 5.6 months versus 2.7 months for erdafitinib versus chemotherapy. So again, erdafitinib reduced the risk of progression of death by 42%. The objective response rate was significantly higher for erdafitinib versus chemotherapy. The objective response rate was 45.6% in the erdafitinib group versus 11.5% in the chemotherapy group. The safety profile observed in the study actually were uh, consistent with the no safety profile of erdafitinib and chemotherapy. Uh, hyperfacetemia, diarrhea, and stomatitis were the most frequent treatment-related adverse events in the erdafitinib group. 13.3% of the patient had treatment-related serious adverse events, and 8.1% um, of the patients had to discontinue the erdafitinib due to treatment-related adverse events. I think the take-home message that erdafitinib significantly extended uh, overall survival in patients with metastatic ureal carcinoma and FGF alteration after pre treatment with an immune checkpoint inhibitor. The median of survival is more than one year. So overall, the phase three TOR study supports the clinical efficacy of erdafitinib as a standard of care option for patients with metastatic ureal carcinoma and pre-specify FGF alteration after uh, treatment with an immune checkpoint inhibitor. And the second point is that the overall survival benefit of erdafitinib in this patient supports molecular testing for FGF alterations in all patients with metastasic ureal carcinoma, how we are doing in lung cancer for EGFR and melanoma uh, with BRF mutation, for example. <music>